up guys this is hdd recovery services we're recovering this flash drive today looks like a promotional unit from one of the uh, schools or something like that that came in from one of our uh, watchers the first thing i always put through uh, on every flash drive that we receive is the flex test we take the flash drive and we just try to move the connector see if there's any flex to it first of all if there isn't any flex you'll feel it right away and that means there is no problem with the connector but if the connector moves even slightly, there's a good chance the connector uh, repair by micro soldering will resolve the situation and make it work again. So I open it up and what I see on the inside, the really cheap design, uh, you can really tell by the quality of uh, the soldering and uh, you know, this company didn't even take time to remove flux from the components in some cases. And usually uh, for promotional devices, it's not gonna happen. They're not gonna really spend much time on getting these things perfectly so that you can use them for years and years and years. They put a really bad product and uh, it's only a matter of time until it fails. Uh, let's have a look at this thing underneath the microscope and inspect it to understand what could be a potential problem. What we got here is the flash drive, so we got our memory component and got a controller also got a com component like a connector and there is no oscillator crystal on this so let's have a look at what we're dealing with in this specific case first stop is a connector because this unit did give us a little bit of a flex so i think just by looking at it you know it doesn't really look all that bad all the points seem to be there or at least look like they're still there and there is a problem number one that i'm seeing and potentially problem number two so let's go over them in detail uh we got our first leg right here and this is the chips power supply leg okay that pin right there feeds power off of the USB port and then goes to this resistor. So let me zoom out a little bit. If I apply pressure to it, you see how it moves? So oh, that's a problem right there. Okay, that is a definitely a problem because if that track is broken, that means we're not getting any power to this device. So right now, if I was to hook up a USB cable to it, male and female, so Hook them to together and um, I'm just gonna connect it to this hub. Really need more space on this workstation, but okay. So let's have a look. There's LED right here. It's supposed to flash. What happens if we apply a little bit of pressure? Nothing happens. The LED is not flashing. It's not showing us any signs of life. So we're just gonna disconnect this piece here and set it aside. So what I want to do is I want to actually do a little bit of a cleanup here and uh, don't really need to in this situation because we got this resistor right here. You can just run a jumper from this leg onto the resistor. Now, would you guys see these videos of how like I do micro soldering it has to make sense like you don't have to just attach this wire to here or that attach this pin to anywhere on this board it has to actually go to somewhere dedicated in this case uh, the first point of contact from this track is with this resistor right here 2R2 okay so what I'm gonna do is run a, um, a jumper wire from this point and uh, solder it into this end of the resistor because I mean we could scrape up a little bit of you know a little bit of uh, 
silk screen here and you know put a oh put a, put a solder dab in there but it is pretty simple to just run a quick wire to get it to work another thing I wanted to inspect is this copper exposed copper episode on the ground this is our ground and for some reason we got exposed copper on it. Exposed copper means either it flexed too much and um, because it flexed some of the silk screen cracked or it could mean that somebody tried to fix it before but it really didn't have any idea about what they were doing. Doesn't it looks like maybe when it was plugged in and maybe somebody applied a lot of pressure on it, it cracked in that spot. The thing we care about is making sure that that um, this unit actually has good solid connection on the ground, and there are no separated pins anywhere. Those four pins they need to be attached. All four of them need to be attached in order to make sure that the unit works. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is, this is super quick repair, it's not even a repair, it's just running a jumper. Seriously like, oh that's a lot, that is a lot, can take most of it back. I need the smaller needles for the syringe for sure. So I'm going to turn the fume extractor on, I don't want to breathe this stuff. But all we need is just the wire, a little bit of a wire, and the soldering iron. That's it. This is the whole repair that we just did. Okay. So now that we got that done, we're gonna plug it in. And when it's plugged in, I'm just gonna clamp it so it doesn't move. Now watch what happens when I powered it on through the USB hub. That red light started flashing. And that means our data is now accessible. As you can see right there, you know, the drive came up ready. And I'll blur this out. And here's our files. I just have to copy them all out. and transfer them to the local hard drive. So that was all there was to it, really. A pretty quick episode, episode but um, we got it done. Uh, it's working now. Just gonna set it up for the transfer and notify the client for happy news. So if you guys need help with uh, flash drives, if they're not accessible, if you can't get information from them, hit us up. The information is on the screen or in the description of this video. Subscribe, we'll be back with more.